Hi, I'm Jennifer Nichols, Interim President at Johns Hopkins Baby Medical Center and past co-chair of Go Red for Women in Baltimore. Welcome to the Red Chair Series. With me today is Dr. Nino Isakadze. Welcome to the Red Chair Series. Thank you, John, for the invitation, and I'm excited to chat with you today. Wonderful. So let's get started. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What is your area of expertise within cardiac medicine? I am a cardiac electrophysiology fellow at Johns Hopkins, and my area of interest is atrial fibrillation, which is the most common arrhythmia that people experience. Where are you in terms of your training? So I am currently a first-year electrophysiology fellow. Mm -hmm. Just to explain, so after general cardiology, fellowship and there is additional training that consists of two years where we specialize in specifically different types of arrhythmias. So what got you interested in medicine? I was fascinated by medicine since early childhood and then as I got older my grandfather experienced heart attack so as I was a, you know family member supporting my loved one going through cardiac disease I was drawn to this field and I was impressed by the heroic actions of the doctors and I wanted to be on the other side and you know help other patients who were going through the heart disease problem so talk to us a little bit more about electrocardiac physiology so what is it I know the shorthand is EP. What does it mean to be an EP doc? So electrophysiology is a field that specializes in different heart rhythm abnormalities, or we can call it electrical problems of the heart. So this ranges from arrhythmias or heart cardiac conduction disease. And what we do is we will, for example, put in a pacemaker if someone's heart is not beating as they should be beating, or we will go after the arrhythmias that they are having in either burn them or freeze them. Um, so we have different technologies to kind of go after the different types of arrhythmias. So if I'm a patient and or a person, what does it feel like if I'm having an arrhythmia? How do I know that this is occurring? So one of the common symptoms that people will experience is heart palpitations or heart, you know, heart racing. They sometimes may feel faint or pass out. Some people may feel fatigue. And most importantly, some people may not feel it at all and just be asymptomatic. So that's where, you know, sometimes the doctors will find it at the regular checkup and regular appointment. But otherwise, it, you know, the symptom spectrum is a very, you know, large spectrum of symptoms that people can experience. So what are the risk factors? So different arrhythmias and different heart conduction problems have different risk factors. Maybe I will focus on atrial fibrillation, which is the most common arrhythmia. So the risk factors, the major risk factors includes age, which is you know something that we cannot change, but there are multiple other modifiable risk factors, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, you know, having other heart problems, having you know excess weight, alcohol consumption, sleep apnea is also a major risk factor, high cholesterol. More specific to atrial fibrillation is, you know, this um, uh, sleep apnea and alcohol consumption. So is it different for men or women or is it from person to person? So the risk factors are same for everybody. But um, what can happen is that women may seek help, help less and, you know, may be referred to specialists less often than men. Interesting. How do we know that? Is there research around this? Yeah, there is actually research that has found that women and you know some um, underrepresented minorities and racial minorities will get less of a specialized care called electrophysiology that offers more definitive therapies for atrial fibrillation management. So as a female who may be experiencing some of these symptoms, is there anything I can do or I would be able to do to advocate for myself? So if you know someone is experiencing symptoms, we urge you to um, ask doctors about the options because atrial fibrillation management is not like one size fits all. It's very personalized and what will work for one person will not for the other. So what we are hoping to achieve is that everybody gets education on how to best manage atrial fibrillation and then with a the doctor come up with a strategy and treatment plan that is personalized to them. 
So you're also very interested in research. Can you talk to us a little bit about the type of research you do and what you're interested in studying? So what we have kind of discovered with this um, research, which is called in a way, the human-centered design. We got together a diverse group of patients and clinicians and uh, together with them came up with a, a multi-level intervention, including digital health technology, mobile app wearables, and also a little bit of human touch with the you know, check-ins with the, from the medical team to educate patients on four pillars of atrial fibrillation management, which includes stroke prevention, rhythm control, rate control, as well as risk factor modifications. And this was actually funded by American Heart Association Community Health in Action Task Force grant. Well, thank you so much for everything you do for our patients and in this community. And I'm really excited to see what comes out of the research that you were doing. It's wonderful that you've been able to marry your clinical interests with all of these technological advances for patients. So thank you so much for everything you do uh, for the field and for being part of the Red Chair series. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great pleasure talking to you tonight.